Hi everyone, my name is Angela from Angela Stitches and welcome back to my channel. And I'm super excited today because I'm finally starting Baker's Wife. I really wanted to start this as soon as this was released last year, I believe. And I know there is a part two to this design and that's really pretty too, but I prefer this one. So I'm going to start this today and I'm going to start these two Princess Titania and Midsummer Night's Fairy in the next two weeks on Saturdays. So really excited about those two. And I'm also going to be dyeing my own fabrics for those. So super excited about that. But today I'm going to start Baker's Wife on this 32 count Belfast linen and lilac. And usually, well, I started stitching Mirabilia's on 40 counts since last year. Um, so it's been a while actually, but this is pretty small. So I was going to stitch this on a 40 count, but I'm going to just do it on a 32 count since it's pretty small. And this calls for a lot of beads and other things. Um, and they started to list the blends separately, so I really like that. So I'm going to start kitting this up with the DMCs and a floss card. And yeah, I'm going to make my working copy and start stitching. So it's actually kind of late, um, I was busy doing other things so I didn't get to start yet. But I have my fabric on my Q-snap and I also have my needle here. And I decided that I want to start this from the middle. So it'll be right across her chest and I think, let me focus this. So I marked my middle which is about here, so about her shoulders. And I'm starting from the middle because then I can go both ways, up or down, and get to all of the fun parts, like her dress and her face, and also her hand with the cupcake. And I also spent some time making my floss card. And since I'm stitching this on a 32 count, I'm going to stitch 2 over 2, so I pulled out a lot more floss than I do when I stitch on a 40 count. And what is kind of unique about this is that it calls for two different weights in this chart. So the regular white and then the B5200, and I know there is a slight difference, but really I can't really tell. I have to really squint, or it has to be in a certain lighting for me to notice. So I checked the chart, and I believe the regular white is more brighter than B5200, and that's why it's used in like the highlights of the skin. So like in these areas like her shoulders and her chin and stuff like that and I don't really care too much about that. So I just decided to use one of the white, the regular white I think, because I had I own, that's the only one that I had. And I didn't have the other one, the B5200, which is most of her skin. So yeah, I don't think it'll change anything about this design or be a big difference even if I do that. So I'm just going to use white for both of the whites for her skin. And I think these colors are really pretty and just the design, like her dress and everything really, even her face really reminds me of Marie Antoinette, the movie with Kirsten Dunst. And it's like a party scene and I just love everything about it, the colors and her dress and everything. So I'm going to start this now. Um, I don't know how much stitching I'll get done tonight, but I'm really excited. So I'll check in again if I have something to show you. So this is my new start from last night and I just, this was so much fun and I couldn't stop stitching so I stayed up pretty late and woke up pretty late this morning but I don't regret any of it. So there were a lot of color changes and this is her, I don't know, like her neck piece and her shoulders. So yeah, I'm going to move over to her hand and to the cupcake today because I think that's going to be a lot of fun to stitch. So. Yeah, this is so pretty and so much fun to stitch and 
I feel like if it wasn't for Romania and I wasn't doing my rotations for Romania, I think I could just stitch this until I finish this. It's that much fun. But yeah, I still have today and tomorrow to work on this. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back later to check in. So it's been a couple of hours and I just finished her chest and her shoulders and also her hand. And I was about to start the cupcake but it calls for a Karen water lily and I don't have that. So I looked it up online to see what it looked like because it's kind of hard to tell from just the picture. And it was a light purple with a very light variegation on it. So I went through my coloring cotton stash and found something similar. So this is called frosted lavender. So I'm going to use this for one of the Karen water lilies. And then the cupcake also called for, it's a very fancy cupcake, so it called for a krennic and it's called for a number four of this color. So I have it, but I have it in number eight. So I'm going to use one strand of this because it's thicker than number fours. And usually I would just wait and get the Karen water lilies, but for something like a cupcake, it really didn't matter to me if it wasn't accurate um, because it's an object. So for Lilith of Labrador, her whole skin called for two skeins of Karen water lilies. And for something like skin, I would just get the calls for colors, but not for something like a cupcake because cupcakes could be any color. And it's only for this cupcake in this chart, so I didn't mind doing a conversion of it. And it also calls for another Karen water lily, and it's, it's for the frame, like this outer frame mostly. And I think I'll convert that to DMC or a coloring cotton, but I'm not stitching that today, so I didn't do a conversion for that just yet. So yeah, I'm going to start stitching the cupcake and I think I'll try to finish this today and tomorrow maybe I'll start working down and get to her dress because I, I just really want to stitch those colors. So just a quick update, um, I just finished stitching the bottom portion of the cupcake. So I'm going to start the frosting but I just wanted to update you on my conversions. So these two are working really well. I wasn't really worried about the chronic but if you do a conversion from number four to number eight, I recommend to use just one strand because one is really enough with number eights on a 32 count fabric. And then the color and cotton worked perfectly. To me, it looks exactly the same and I don't think the variegations really matters. So getting the Karen water lilies for this, I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think I could have just used DMC to be honest, but either way, I'm really happy with my choices. So I'm going to take a break and come back and finish up the cupcake. So today is the last day of my rotation for Baker's Wife and I'm really happy with my progress so far. I think I got a lot done and everything looks so good. So I did finish the cupcake but since it's a very expensive looking cupcake it calls for a lot of beads. So I did finish all of the cross stitches but it's not looking all that fancy just yet. And then I also started her face and a little bit of her pink hair, which was really hard to stop stitching last night, but I stopped. So today I think I'll work on her face a little bit more and maybe her hair too, but I also really want to start her dress. So I might come down and do the flowers and get to the dress here because I really like this color. And then I found out that her dress near the bottom of the design called for the purple Karen water lily that... I did a conversion to coloring cotton, so I'm going to have this out and remember to use this because I want to keep this cohesive, so I'm just going to make a note to myself. And I think I forgot to talk about this fabric, so I actually couldn't start this last year because I just couldn't make up my mind about the fabric, and I knew that I didn't want to stitch this on a fabric like this in the picture. It looks nice, but I didn't really like it. So I thought a lot about what fabric to use and I have this pink fabric by Swigart or Picture This Plus, I'm not really sure. So I was planning on stitching it on this but I thought it was too similar to the hair color. And the hair is really one of the focal point in this design so it would be a shame if this was lost in the fabric. So I decided to choose a different color for the fabric. So I was thinking, um, I was also thinking about doing something simple like plain white fabric, but the skin on Baker's Wife is super light. So I wanted some color to the fabric, but I wanted something kind of creepy or eerie in a sense because 
she's very pale and her skin is kind of it looked green or blue to me in the picture but it's actually a little purplish um and around like the shadow area and she kind of reminded me of that pinup zombie girl from beetlejuice so i wanted something that i don't know something different but nothing too dark because this felt very airy and light but kind of in a weird creepy way um i don't know how to explain this very well so i was just looking online and i saw this purple fabric and i thought this color would go really well with her dress and also just with the overall tone of her skin because it's darker than her skin and it's not really clashing with any of the colors here i think it actually complements the colors of her hair dress and like the pink accessories around her neck and shoulders and it's also kind of pastel -y that really goes well with the whole design so yeah that was my thought process on choosing this color fabric because it's very different from what i usually go for so i was a little nervous but i think it looks really good so yeah i hope all of that made sense so yeah i guess that's it for now so i'm going to start stitching later tonight so i'll talk to you later So today I'm going to put this away and start working on something else, which I'll talk about in a second. But yeah, I think I made a lot of progress in the last three days and I'm really happy with it. I actually want to just continue with this, but I also want to keep my schedule and get to all of my whips this month. So I'm going to put this away, but I'll probably come back to this pretty soon. So since my last update yesterday, I made the other half of the working copy and I stitched this whole section. And then her face and her cheeks. I think it looks really good, but I actually wanted to finish her whole face, but it was just getting too late. So yeah, this was really fun, and I think this is a really good design for a beginner. So anyone who never stitched a Mirabilia before, um, I think this will be a nice project to start. Um, because it's pretty small, and the colors are really vibrant, so it's really fun to stitch. And also there's a lot of chunks of stitching more than confetti. Um, there are some confetti in the flowers, I guess, so that would be a nice place to practice reading the chart and stitching the confetti-ish areas before getting into like the bigger mirabilias. And there's also beading, so you get to do that, and also some back stitching. And also if you want to get the specialty flosses, which I'm not going to for this project, but if you want to, you can also try out some of the Karen Water Lilies and Krennic. So there's a little bit of everything, but in small sections. So I think it's a very good project for a beginner or to anyone who wants to try out a Mirabilia for the first time. So yeah, I think this is a really good project for that. So I'm going to put this away. Um, I really don't want to, but I want to start working on my next project, which is my other lavender and lace whips um, or whip, my Blue Moon Angel. So this is what I have so far. Um, let me put something over here. So this is what I have so far and this is what it looks like when it's finished. So this is also on a 32 count picture this plus fabric I believe and I'm stitching 2 over 2 but I'm going to, um, well I'm doing 1 over 1 skin so I started her hand with that but not her face just yet. So I'm going to work on this today and tomorrow so yeah I'll talk about this project and my progress um, on it in my next video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!